Hi everyone. I've uh, just logged into the uh, vCenter today and I noticed there's a new vCenter server update available. Now I click down here and I can actually also see it says here updates available. So this is always exciting. But if you remember from one of the previous videos, we uh, already updated the host itself from 7.0 to 7.0 update one. So most likely what's happened here is that the vCenter is also available. So looking at the dates here, we have some uh, older uh, updates here and it, it seems like there's also a, a newer one here uh, from October 22nd. So from here we can see some information like the bills and, and so on. And we can see the link to the release notes, but how do we actually get started? Good question. Well, if you remember, we had the uh, WAMI, the so-called vSphere, uh, vCenter server management appliance interface. And with this one, I'm just going to log in with the root account. Note saying that. So if we take a peek here, we have the version number. We could do a quick Google here and search for that. Let's see that it looks like we are on 7.0.0 release D. And if we then click down here, we have update. Click on this. And we'll be able to hopefully in just a second see some updates that are available and uh, nothing available <laughs> interesting. Uh, let's try and uh, take a look again. It should be something here at least since we saw that before. Okay, interesting, it didn't pop up. Okay, so from here we can see there's a 701. So let's take a look. So before we had 700D, put that in here. You can see that would take us to 70 update 1A. And uh, I would say getting to update one is a good idea because right now we have a disconnect between the vCenter and the hosts. And uh, you could say, well, what, what kind of difference does that make? Well, uh, I'll give you a quick example here. So I'm back in the vSphere client, create a new machine, create a new VM, next, uh, next. We'd have to go and select the host, next. Pick some data store here, next. Then notice here, it says compatible with. So this should show certain piece of information here, but now we see there's a new version number here, but it doesn't get correctly displayed because the vSender doesn't know about this version. So it can probably work with it, but this will most likely cause some funny business down the, the line. So let's cancel out of this and go back. And there's not really too much to do. Uh, obviously, we, we see there's some download that needs to be done. So how do we <clears throat> actually get on with installing this, well, first of all, we have some pre-update checks that we could run here, but we also have staging. Staging basically means that we are getting everything ready, but it's not technically taking the vSend offline. And then in, in the end, we could do the stage and install. So why don't we run this pre-update check and see what happens. So the update finally checked and what we see here is it uh, passed and uh, there's an estimated downtime here of 198 minutes, quite a lot, but uh, okay, it needs to download everything. I guess it has to try and estimate how long that's gonna take and, and so on. But anyway, that the download itself, should, of course, should not cause any downtime. So let's uh, click stage and install. Uh, obviously, if this was a uh, production environment, you would want to plan this out, but here, Basically, this is just a home lab, so uh, I'm okay with some downtime on the vCenter. In general, running uh, updates on the vCenter will just mean that you can't manage the host. The host will continue running, of course. The virtual machines will continue being available. So in general, it's really not a big deal. Now notice here, of course, it's also doing the pre fly check. It wants me to put in the uh, SSO password, so I'm gonna put that in. Next. This is a good idea. Some validation happening. Okay, then it says we should do some backup. That's a good idea. So how do we actually do that? Well, we would have to go to backups. So let's see here, and we see I've not set anything up because it's a pretty new vCenter. So I'll just say backup, and where do we want to put it? well, then you would have to specify some location and so on. Now, since this is pretty much a completely new vSender, I'm actually not going to do this right now. If it uh, crashes, it, it crashes, 
but I promise to make a video later on that will show you how to get all of this set up just in case. So let's go back here and say, yeah, yeah, we've, we've done all of that. We, we are happy. Worst case, I'll just basically redeploy the vCenter here. So this starts up the installation process. Uh, I'll just pause the video until uh, it's moving on. Okay, so we finally managed to get to the end. Uh, this took quite some time here, but that's okay. Installation succeeded. Installation complete. Let's click close. We uh, can try and log in again here. Just to get a quick confirmation that, in fact, we can see it's on 701. We could even do a quick uh, check just to see if there are any new updates. That's not the case. Okay, then let's go back to the vSphere client here. I have to log in again, of course. Close these windows up here as well while we're at it. Okay, all looks well, your system is up to date and running the latest version of vCenter last checked. Yeah, so all looks well. We could even uh, try just to see what happens if we go to this new VM wizard here. Next, click the data store, compatibility, and we see now the naming is being shown up correct. So hopefully uh, you will be able to replicate this and um, get to the same result in, in your lab. Hope the video was useful. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.